Oh, okay, in this video, what I'm going to do is I am going to go over uh, interpreting a p-value in a chi-score test, okay? It's new for the uh, 2014 curriculum. Um, they'll, they took the critical values out of the formula books, so they'll either give you the critical value, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well, um, or you need to learn how to uh, interpret a p-value, which is no problem. Okay, so it's, Mr. Perino was highly amused with the attendance or lack thereof of his senior class, so he decided to do a chi-score test to see if predicted grades of seniors and their attendance rate were dependent or not. After collecting the data, Mr. Perino used the fall, uh, found the following. Okay, so um, I used 90% as my cutoff here, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, 6, 7. Um, you can probably guess how this is going to come out um, just by the tone of my voice that I wasn't real thrilled with their attendance. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this works, okay? So write down the null hypothesis. Um, okay, well, the null hypothesis is going to be, so predicted grades of seniors and their attendance rate are independent, okay? So the, the important thing there is you just make sure it's independent, okay? The alternative hypothesis, okay? Well, that's going to be, and let me just write it down real quick. So for the alternative hypothesis, it's going to be uh, predicted grades of seniors and their attendance are going to be dependent, okay? Um, now, Show that the expected value of students with the two or three and over 90% is 12.8. Okay, so if we're going to look at this, okay, so uh, let's see, two or three and 90, above 90%. So that's going to be this right here, okay? Now, to do expected value, they often do this. They ask you, you can find it on the calculator, but um, what you need to do is 62, 18 is you need to get the total of the, what I did is I just added up the columns there and then I'm gonna add up the rows. And so that's 49 is 64, and then this is gonna be what, 36? Now they both should add to 100 hopefully, so 62, yeah, 100. There's 100 total. So that's the important thing right there. Okay, so to find, to show that, they often do these show that problems, okay? So notice that I'm gonna do two of these. So um, in order to show that it's 12.8, they give you the answer. So what you do is you just do 20, uh, times the um, column times the row, or row times the column, it doesn't matter, um, divided by 100, okay? And if you were to break that out on the calculator, it's 12.8. There's no, uh, I'm not going to waste your time and do it on the calculator. So that's the only work you would need to show there, okay? Um, now, show that the degrees of freedom is 2. Well, the degrees of freedom, like I'd write down the formula, the degrees of freedom is rows minus 1 times columns minus 1 equals the degrees of freedom. So in this case, there's two rows, so it's going to be 2 minus 1, and then there's three columns, so that's 3 minus 1, so that's what, 1 times 2, which is 2. Okay, so again, they give you the answer on both of these, and a very common mistake is kids don't show enough work to get these marks. That'd be like probably two marks apiece, okay? Um, now, they probably wouldn't put both of those in the same problem, but I, I'm doing it just to, to show you kind of what to expect. Now, to calculate the um, chi-squared value, um, what you do is you just go to the calculator and you go, um, you turn it on first. That always helps. And then, so make sure you have batteries, okay? Like if you run out of batteries in your exam, like bring some extra batteries, okay? I've had kids just do this. Okay, so second matrix and then um, go over to edit. And this is a two by three matrix. Now I've already entered it in just to save time, okay? And once you've entered it in, um, you go to stat, go over to tests, and then go up to chi-squared test, not, good, not G of F, that's goodness of fit, we don't need that. Um, and we just go, we don't just arrow right through it, and we get our value, which is 13.7, okay? So this is gonna be, what, 13.7, okay? Um, now, find the p-value. Now, the p-value is also on the calculator, okay? Oh, what happened there? Um, stat, and then test, and then chi squared test. <clears throat> it is 0 0.00105. Okay, so y y make sure you put this to three significant figures. 0 0.00105. 0 okay. Um, now, this the whole purpose of this um, video is I want to show you what that you don't need a critical value to interpret this. Okay, so. Um, if we look, it says Mr. Perrin conducts a test at a 5% significance level, okay? That's the important part. Comment on whether he should accept or reject the null hypothesis. Okay, well, if it's 5%, okay, 5% as a decimal is 0 0.05. Okay, so if P is greater than 0 0.05, we are going to accept the null hypothesis. Okay, um, if P is less 
than 0 0.05, we are going to reject it. Okay, so you'll notice that this works the opposite of critical values, and I'll show you that in just a second. So in this case, this is a really small number, so it's less than, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And for your reasoning, okay, you can't just say reject. You have to give a reason, and you would say something to the effect of like 0 0.00105 is less than 0 0.005. Okay, uh, and that's how you interpret a p-value right there. If this number had been greater than 0 0.005, we would have accepted the null hypothesis. Okay. Okay. So now, what they would have to do is, if they wanted you to comment with a critical value, so if they gave you a chi-squared uh, critical value here, would be two degrees of freedom at five percent significant level is 5.991. So again, you would make um, a comparison. Well, in this case, it works the opposite. Okay. So if um, you know that if the chi squared um, if the chi squared calculation is less than the critical value, um, you know chi squared critical value, you accept the null hypothesis. So uh, okay, so this is the confusing part. It's it's opposite. So if the chi squared calc is greater than the chi squared critical value, you reject. Okay, now in this case, if you had to prove it, you would say well thirteen point seven is greater than five point nine nine one. So you would reject. Now, notice in both cases we, we rejected. Okay, obviously you're going to reject because we're going to reject this because, you know, attendance rate and grades matter, man. You got to go to class. All right, I get it. It's boring sometimes, but you got to go, man. All right, I miss my seniors, though. They're, they've been off for a week. And uh, come in next week, man. Your exams are coming up, okay? I'm here to help. All right, guys, uh, that's it for now. Hope this helped out. Uh, late.